Stayallday.com. You're now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. What is that? That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of wait for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is Embracing Rejection. But before we get into this, let me remind everybody, I send out a text message every single day, free of charge, that is guaranteed to have you focused, sharp, and on point. I named it the Daily Motivation, because that's what it's going to do. It's at least going to give you a, at least a little quick jolt of motivation to start your day. I mean, I, I'm not guaranteeing it's going to take you through the whole day, but it will at least let you get started being focused and sharp and on point to start the day. You do want to get this message, so here's what you should do. Text me at my number, 305-384-6894, and I'll be sending that to you every morning as a member of my texting community. As soon as you text me and we verify that you are who you say you are. So that's that number is down below in the description. Secondly, work on your game university. That is the place where I do all of my coaching. That's the place where all my courses live. That's the place where all my high level trainings and frameworks are. If you want to get access to those things like anything on mindset, strategy, systems and accountability. If you listen to this show, you listen to three episodes of this show. Do you know what I know what I'm talking about in those areas? You want to go higher level there and get some real hands on what to do, how to do it, where to apply it and all of that and get direct help from me in the process. Go to work on your game university dot com. That link, along with the number to my text community, are down below in the show notes. So let's get into the topic, which is embracing rejection. First of all, let's get a definition of this word rejection. It means the dismissing or refusing of a proposal or idea. If you play the game often enough, any game. This is going to happen. You will be rejected. All right. If you go out in the, the social world, the dating world, you're going to get rejected by people. You're in the sales world. You're going to get rejected. You're trying to get uh, you're applying for jobs. You're going to get rejected. What's another thing you could do? You play basketball. You're going to shoot the ball and it's not going to go in the basket. Sometimes you shoot it. And somebody blocks your shot. It just doesn't go in. You play soccer. Goal is going to block your kick. All right. These things are going to happen. This is all part of the game. You play long enough. You're going to get rejected. Okay. So let's talk about how you can embrace this rejection and use it in a productive, forward thinking way. Point number one topic, once again, is embracing rejection. Number one, you cannot be rejected for what you do not ask for. If you don't make the pitch, you don't put yourself out there, then you can't get rejected. Most of you have not been rejected often enough, not because you're batting a thousand, not because you're perfect is because you are not making enough requests. You're not putting enough pitches out there. You're not making enough offers to even accumulate rejections. Many of you haven't faced enough rejections simply because you have not tried enough. You're not trying often enough. You are too slow, too lazy, and you're doing things too late in order to even pile up enough rejections. Rejections happen in the game. Michael Jordan famously had a commercial that said, uh, 26 times I've been trusted to make the, to take the game winning shot and I missed. And he talked about how many shots he had missed. You know, the all time leader in, I don't know if it, he still holds the record, but at one point, the all time leader in strikeouts in the history of baseball was Babe Ruth. And he also was the leader in home runs. But he had the most times that he went up there and struck out and did not get on base. Didn't even, didn't get a chance to hit the ball. The all time leader in missed shots in NBA history as of today is Kobe Bryant. As a matter of fact, let me see if I can pull this up. Let me see if I can pull up this list because I know it is in here. So, yeah, here it is. NBA all-time leaders for missed field goal attempts. Missed, that means they shot the ball and it did not go in the basket. Uh, you want to know the all-time leaders? Kobe Bryant is number one. LeBron James is number two. John Havlicek, number three. Elvin Hayes, number four. Number five, Carl Malone. Number six, Dirk Nowitzki. Number seven, Carmelo Anthony. Number eight, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Number nine, Michael Jordan. And number 10, Vince Carter. Now, what is the significance of this list of people? The significance is every single one of them, and I'm looking further down the list, Dominique Wilkins, Elgin Baylor, Allen Iverson, Russell Westbrook, Wilt Chamberlain, Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen, Alex Angus, Hal Greer, Bob Kuski, Akeem Olajuwon, Oscar Robinson, Tim Duncan, 
Jerry West. I'm going further and further down. I got to get all the way to number 27 when I name a player who is not in or will not be in the NBA Hall of Fame. All the rest of these players are in the Hall of Fame. The only ones not in the Hall of Fame officially are players who are still playing, like LeBron's still playing, or they're not eligible yet. Like Carmelo Anthony, he hasn't been, you got to be out of the NBA for a certain number of years before you're eligible, but he will be in the Hall of Fame. Vince Carter will be in the Hall of Fame. Russell Westbrook will be in the Hall of Fame. Who else is not yet? Everybody else I named is already in the Hall of Fame. The first 26 guys on this list of all time missed shots. That means they shot it and it did not go in. Every single one of them is in the NBA Hall of Fame. The whole point here is not that you need to go play basketball and miss uh, 10,000 shots like Kobe Bryant. The point is you got to put yourself out there in order to even miss because the more times that you miss, you're getting closer to making one or assuming that you have some skill. You have worked in sales and you know some of the common sayings about rejection. Every no gets you closer to a yes. Right. And in some sales jobs, people celebrate when they get told no because they know that every certain number of no answers is getting them closer to the inevitable yes answer. I know how many sales calls personally. I know how many sales calls I got to go through on average before I get somebody to say yes, which means when they say yes, that means money is made or what in sales we call that a close. To close a sale is a good thing. Close is a good thing. It means they said yes and they gave you the money. That's a close. When someone tells me no, I'm completely fine with that as long as I know I did everything I was supposed to do and you know, pulled out all the stuff and they say no, I'm good with that. I know that when we're doing outreach for media, for example, which we do a lot of over here, I've appeared on 300 plus uh, media platforms that other people's audience, in front of other people's audiences, I know how often people are going to say no. And the thing is, for many people, you have a desire to be told yes, but you don't put yourself in a line of fire often enough to even get to the yeses because you're not making enough offers. So if you want to be told yes, you got to accept the fact that no is part of the game. All right. One of the trade offs of getting told yes is that you're going to get told no. One of the trade offs of sales is that not everybody's going to buy. So in order for you to get the yes of people who do buy, you got to get the no's of people who don't buy. It's like the trade off of having a big house with a, with a gra garden of grass out front is that uh, somebody got to cut the grass. All right? You got to pay for that landscaper or you got to buy a lawnmower and you got to do it yourself. But somebody has to cut that grass. That's the trade off of the situation that you decide to sign up for. All right? The trade off of having a car is you got to put gas in it. Right, the trade-off of kids is somebody got to wake up in the middle of the night and deal with them when they have nightmares or they're sleeping in the bed with you and they keep waking up and tossing and turning or whatever the situation is. You got to deal with that. That's the trade-off of the circumstance that you signed up for. Everybody follow what I'm saying here. So this, there are no perfect scenarios, folks. I told you this in episode 2174. There are only trade-offs. There are no perfect scenarios. So when me and my friends, for example, were in our late teens, these are my friends I grew up with in Philadelphia, we started to go out to places like the mall or in South, South Street, which is a place in Philly. I don't know what South Street is like these days, but back when we were growing up, we're talking like the late 90s, when we were in our late teens. South Street was the place that everybody went from all over the city. We would go out there and we would walk up and down South Street talking to girls. That's what we did. And we would go to parties, like house parties or whatever kind of parties we found out about. We were unfazed by approaching a female and her not being interested. We were completely unfazed by that circumstance. Why? Because we did it so often that it didn't matter to the one who said no. As soon as one said no, we immediately took our attention off her as our focus on the next one. Because we might, if we're focused too much on the one who said no, we might miss the one who would say yes. All right, so we got to keep it moving. And it's the same thing that you got to think. We were sharpening our swords so we could approach the girl who was interested. So getting told no was a normal part of the game. If you were approaching enough girls, all right, that was just the game. And all of you, whether you're approaching girls or you're approaching prospects, you need to be putting yourself out there often enough that the no is part of the game to where it starts to roll off your back. Robert G. Allen talked about this in his book called Creating Wealth, that when you're out there trying to sell anything, he was talking about real estate. When you're out there trying to get a certain type of real estate deal, there are going to be a bunch of people who tell you no. He said you're going to get 20 no's before you get one yes. But the no's don't matter because every time somebody tells you no, okay, Cool. Cross them off. I'm going to make the next phone call because I got to get to that yes. Same thing you need to be thinking. Point number two. Today's topic, once again, is embracing rejection. Number two. Anyone who will tell you no will usually tell you why they told you no if you ask. Now, in some instances, you don't need to know why because it may be obvious to you. But in other instances, you might want to know why because it could help you sharpen your game up. So you can find out why you are being rejected so you can learn from it. This also applies when people tell you yes, by the way. You could also use this, this question. 
This is something that I've done in business, as a matter of fact. I have uh, many times got on calls with people who have bought from me in the past, people who have been members of my audience, people who have bought my high ticket programs. And I would simply ask them the question, look, you got a lot of options out there around this, whatever this thing is that you bought from me. Why would you decide to buy it from me? Why me amongst all your other choices? What are you getting from me that you're not getting anywhere else? I would directly ask them that question. And they would answer the question. They would tell me. And when they answered that question, what do they tell me? They tell me the specific things that are about me or, or work on your game that personally uh, caught their attention or that they personally like the most, as opposed to all their other options out there in the marketplace. And that's very valuable information for me. Why? Because it, now I know what to emphasize, because if I want to find more people like this guy, this guy and this girl, then I'm going to take the things that they said. I'm going to emphasize those so I can get more people like them to come into my world. Everybody understand? This is the same thing that any of you can do. Any of you as customers or even your fans, they don't even have to be a customer. It'd just be somebody who's a fan of yours. Find out why they're a fan. They will tell you specifically why. And often it will be the thing that they emphasize and notice most about you and like most about you it might be different than what you think. So you got to ask the question and then listen. So find out when it comes to someone telling you no, if you are willing to find out why you're being rejected so you can learn. I was just on a call today, as a matter of fact, with a woman who is she works in a professional speaking business. And I've done a, a good amount of professional speaking over the years. I haven't really over the last three years focused on it too much. Like when COVID happened, there were no events. I didn't go into the doing virtual events and Zoom events and stuff like that. I went into really focusing on work on your game university, which has really been my focus for the last three years. But it doesn't mean I wouldn't do speaking gigs. If I get a call, somebody makes the offer and they have a check, then I will do a speaking gig. Now, somebody reached out to me for a speaking gig and actually not for a speaking gig. This person, who was this? I did a media outreach appearance on somebody else's show. And one of their team saw my stuff and said, Dre, you really should get into doing more speaking gigs. I know you don't do a lot of speaking, but you should because there's a big opportunity for you in the speaking gig. This guy, he just took a liking to my stuff. And he said, I know a bunch of people in the speaking industry I can connect you with. Let me connect you with these people and let's just see where it goes. So this is what you all call networking and having connections. This is one of the ways that it happens, being outside and being in the right places. So this guy connected me with somebody. I had a conversation with a woman just this morning, the day that I'm recording this, and she's in the speaking industry. She's well connected in the industry and she was telling me all this stuff about, hey, I could help sell you and market you and promote you and do this thing and that thing and that thing. And she was telling me, look, all right, based on the material of yours that I've seen, here's some things that we could adjust. Here's some things you're going to need. Here's some pieces you got to have. Then I showed her some stuff that I had that she didn't know I had. She said, oh, well, I didn't know you had this. Let me take a look at this. After I absorb it, I'm going to come back to you and tell you what I see, what you could possibly fix or edit or update or what we might need to change and know what it would cost, how we could do it and how we could help actually put you out there in the business. And you can make you can supplement what you're already doing in business by doing more speaking gigs and landing more gigs and making more money. And I said, that sounds good to me. The whole point of this is I'm telling you that to tell you that I guarantee you she's not going to come back and say, Dre, everything you're doing is perfect. I guarantee you she's going to say there's some things you need to fix. There's some things you need to edit. There's some things we can change. She watched one of my videos from a, a speaking event that I did earlier this year. And she said, well, when you came out, you could have did that a little bit differently. You could have had a video that did this and you could have started the speech by saying this and you did this, but you could have did it better by doing this. And she was just throwing some things out there. But the whole point was she was giving me critiques and telling me how if you do it these ways, instead of the way that you are doing it, that would help me. That's her talking. That would help me better market you and you would make money and I would make money and everybody makes money and it'll expand your brand. It will actually help you do more of what you're already doing with your coaching programs because you'll have a bigger audience and a bigger brand name and it will help everything. And the whole point is you got to be open to hearing these critiques. That's the whole point. She wasn't telling me no. She was actually she's trying to get me to tell her yes, because she's trying to sell me something. The whole and I am willing to buy if what she offers makes sense. And so far it sounds good, but I got to hear what she's coming through with. The whole point is she wasn't telling me everything I'm doing is perfect. Uh, she wasn't telling me you're great. Dre. Let me just figure out a way that I can you know, get a piece of what you're already doing. She was telling me there's some things we're going to edit that will make you even better. It's not that you're bad, but we're, here's some things that can make you better. And this can help everybody win in the process. And I will help you get there. The whole point is you got to be willing to receive this feedback. So when somebody tells you no or somebody says they're not interested, they'll tell you why. There's another guy I was talking to a couple weeks ago. He was looking at a, a uh, like a demo video I had of speaking. And he said, well, look, you got to have a, the video that you have 
I would need something a little bit different from this for me to market you the way that I market to the people that I talk to. That is a different guy in the same industry. Two people told me two different things for two different reasons because they're looking at things in different ways. So everybody has their own perspective and opinion. You got to take it all in, see what makes the most sense to you and make the adjustments that you feel like you need to make. Ultimately, you get to make the decision. But the whole point is you want to listen to what everybody has to say. So you want to find out why you're being rejected, if you're being rejected, so you can learn. It also applies again when people tell you yes. So when people say no, there is usually something that causes them to say no. And it usually will be a critique in some way. You had to be thick skinned enough, disciplined enough and mentally tough enough to receive it. Negative energy is usually more readily shared than positive energy as a general rule. I don't know why this is, but it's true. In other words, if somebody tells you no and you ask them why they said no, they are more likely to answer that question than if somebody tells you yes and you ask them why they say yes. Or it's easier for them to articulate it. Let's put it that way. Usually if somebody tells you yes, they'll probably answer the question. But their answer may be not substantial enough, substantive enough for you to do anything with it. Now, somebody tells you no, usually will give you a really good answer as to why they told you no, as long as you're willing to accept it. And if they perceive that you're willing to hear it, then they will tell you the truth. Now, if they perceive you're not willing to hear it or they're just not the type of person who tells somebody a cold, harsh truth to their face, then you might not get much use out of this. So it depends on who you're talking to, and how you ask them. But people are usually more able to articulate why they said no to something than they are able to articulate why they said yes. That's my experience. And it may not be yours, but you just got to be able to ask the question, period. So the people who said no to you, ask them why. He will say yes to you. Ask them why. Take note of every answer that you get and you're going to notice some commonalities. That's what's going to happen. So if you ask somebody what their critique of your offering is that causes them to say no, they'll tell you, given that they think you'll listen. Now, there are sales companies out there who buy process. This is part of their process. If a prospect does not buy from them, someone from the company is assigned. This is their job. They will call that prospect who said no and say, look, I'm not calling you to close you. I'm not calling you to try to reclose or sell you. I just want you to tell us why you did not buy our product. And they are, their job is to take notes and listen. Why did that person not buy the product? And they take notes and then they put all those notes together in aggregate and they figure out what do we need to adjust or change so that we next time we talk to somebody like that person, they say yes instead of saying no. There are people who do this by process. Anytime somebody says no, I want to know why they said no. You need to notice. Any of you who sells anything, you need to know why people are saying no to you. You need to know why people are not buying. If you want someone and they end up not going with whatever it is that you're offering, you need to know why they said no. Do not assume that you know why. Ask them why they said no. They will tell you. I guarantee you they will tell you. But you got to be open and listening to it. That's the whole point. And this is great data for a, a sales company to get. And the person who said no also, they appreciate it because why? They get to voice their opinion. Right. And good thing you should know about people is people love sharing their opinions. So you ask someone for their opinion, they will give it to you. Now, trust me. So if you ever ask anybody for their opinion, you ever want to get somebody to talk, ask them for their opinion. All right. Guarantee nobody will tell you, I don't know. All right. I don't know is not an answer to an opinion question. If you ask somebody what they think, they will tell you something like, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. But if you ask somebody for their opinion. I guarantee you'll never find someone who's uh, at a loss for words. That's the whole point. And you need to have a process, again, about asking people. Uh, why they are saying no. And the more you can make this part of your process, uh, the better you'll do. Point number three. Today's topic, once again, is embracing rejection. Keep playing the game. Even when you're being rejected, you got to keep playing the game. In sales, every no is one step closer to a yes. That's pretty much how it works. Assuming that you have a solid process for asking. Keyword is process, meaning you know you're doing the same things the same way every time. You keep asking, eventually people are going to say yes. When I was looking to, I mean, I could tell you so many times. When I was first starting to play basketball, as a matter of fact, first organized basketball team I played on, I was age 14. I had tried out for a couple teams, maybe two or three teams, maybe three or four teams in the same neighborhood, same rec center before I made that first team at age 14. The other teams I tried out, I didn't make the team. Now, I had no skills. I wasn't good at basketball, but it still was uh, saddening for me to not make those basketball teams. But I tried many times before I made the team. In high school, I tried out for the basketball team all four years. I only made it one time, my, my last year, my senior year. And when college, I only went to one college. I made the team that year. Then when I was looking to play pro ball, I went to an exposure camp, got some good footage, a good scouting report. 
when I wanted to get my first basketball agent, I called 60 basketball agents, called or emailed 60 basketball agents in the summer of 2005 trying to find an agent because I knew the agent would know the people who I needed to know. One, so 20 agents responded back to me and said, show me what you got. Of those 20, so I started with 60, funneled down to 20 who responded. I sent my material to 20. One of that 20 said, I will represent you. So I went from 60 to 20. So 59 people told me no. But that one who said yes, he helped me start my career. And had that not happened, this show would not exist in the form that it currently exists. Because I kept playing the game. That's the whole point. You got to keep playing the game. In the summer of summer into the fall of 2008, 2008, 2007, 2007, I sent 10,000 emails over the course of about four months. And there's not 10,000 basketball teams in the world. I sent emails to some of the same teams over and over and over again, different emails, but the same teams over and over again, just trying to get a bite because I was trying to get someone's attention to get myself back into pro ball because it had been a whole year I hadn't played pro ball because I just simply couldn't find a, a, uh, a job opportunity. I was looking for a job. I was jobless trying to get on. The whole point is I kept playing the game. I'm sharing all that with you, letting you know I kept playing the game. I told you that in media, and this is starting around from about 2015 to now, that's when I started doing media appearances, like getting interviewed on podcasts, radio shows, YouTube shows, things like that. I've appeared on 300 plus platforms over the years. Our current uh, Dream 100 list, which is basically a list of people who already have the audiences we want to get in front of. These are the people who have a show and we want to get on it. Our current Dream 100 list right now, let me pull it up. I'm just pulling up our CRM just so y'all uh, know that what I'm telling you is not, I'm not just, I'm not just speaking from uh, conjecture here. I'm just telling you what we're actually doing. Our current lead list, current CRM right now, right now today, as of this recording, 1,781 leads in our CRM right now. 1,781 leads amongst all the people, places, platforms that have an audience that we want to try to get in front of. I told you I've appeared on 300 plus. Well, our list is 1,781. Just to give you an idea. All right, just because I've been on 300 plus doesn't mean I reached out to 300 and they all said yes. No, most of them either did not, most of them did not respond. Most of, most of them don't respond. But those who do respond, Sometimes we get a no. Sometimes a will just come out and just say no. I would say amongst every maybe 10 responses we get, we get someone who just says, no, this is not a fit. We're not interested. Most of the time we get nothing, no response, because these people are hard to reach. We're trying to reach people who are hard to reach. And we are reaching people who are in demand. But we have a process for getting through it. The whole point is process. Okay, And the whole point also is staying in the game. When you have a process, it's easy to stay in the game. We have no process. It's hard to stay in the game because you don't know what to do next when you're getting rejection or you get not getting responses or things are not working. We have a process. All you do is follow the damn process. So it's easy to stay in the game even when things are not working yet. Uh, what does the process say to do next? Do the next step. That's it. Process means the same things, the same way every time. I talked about this in episode, I believe it was episode 2013. But let me make sure I got that right. Yes, episode 2013. Same things, the same way every time. When you have a process for asking for the yes, that you know it works with the right person, use it every time. And anytime somebody says no, that's okay. Like I have a process for somebody comes into my uh, coaching program, work on your game university, I have a process. Not everybody who gets on a call with us says yes. All right, some people say no. Some people say, hey, not right now. Some people say I don't have the resources. That's okay. I don't change my process just because somebody said no. I won't change my process if five people in a row say no. Why? Because I know when I'm talking to the right person, they will say yes. I already know that. It's proven already. So I have a hard process. So the process does not change based on the results that I'm getting from people. Because if they're saying no, then something was not right about the match and the offer. But when I get the right person, it's a guarantee yes. I already know that. I'm just looking for the right people. That's my job. So you're not doing things randomly when you have a process. And you're not hoping for results when you have a process. You already know what's going to happen. Best way to get a process, for those of you who do not have one, is to connect with someone who is already doing things with a process. And you can just borrow their brain and plug into their stuff. Plug into what they've already created and what they're already doing. You don't have to recreate the wheel or try to create your own wheel. Right, that's an inefficient and slow way to achieve results. And we've been talking about slowness a lot here on the show. So 
you should already understand you don't need to do it that way. So with that said, let's recap today's class, which is embracing rejection, which is dismissing or refusing of a proposal or an idea. Number one, you can't be rejected for what you don't ask for. Many of you are simply not playing the game enough. You're not taking enough swings at the bat to even strike out. All right, the best home run hitters strike out the most. The best scorer score missed the most shots. Point number two, anyone who will tell you no will usually tell you why if you ask. So you got to be open and mentally tough and disciplined enough to ask. Why did you say no? People will tell you. Ask people their opinion. They will give it to you. Trust me. Number three, keep playing the game. In sales, every no is a step closer to a yes, assuming that you have a solid process for asking. I've told you many times in life that I've gone many, 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 many rounds of not getting the answer that I wanted before I got the answer that I did want. But because I had a process, I was able to stay in the game. You got to have a process to stay in the game, folks, not just uh, discipline, not just grit and grind. You got to have a process. All that said, text me. Let me know the best point you got from today's class and that you want to get my daily motivation message. My number is 305-384-6894. You'll be getting it every day free of charge to your phone. Secondly, work on your game university. That's where I do all my coaching, all my high-level trainings, frameworks, and courses. Go to workingyourgameuniversity.com. You can get on a call with us. You can get immediate access to our online materials and other options you'll see right there on that page. Again, workingyourgameuniversity.com. Work on your game. Dre all day.